We pay 65% of our income at, say, upper middle class, middle class to upper middle class level in Canada. It isn't obvious to me at all that that money is well used. In fact, quite the contrary. In my country now, um, our citizens make 60% of, they produce 60% of what you produce in the U.S. That's plummeted over the last 20 years as state intervention has increased. I'm not convinced that the claim that the interests of people who lack opportunity are best served by state intervention. And there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. I mean, in this insightful video, distinguished psychologist and cultural commentator Jordan Peterson provides a thought-provoking examination of the pressing issues facing Canada's economy. With his characteristic blend of intellect and eloquence, Peterson dissects the complex factors contributing to the economic landscape of the Great White North. Peterson begins by elucidating the multifaceted nature of Canada's economic challenges, addressing key issues such as stagnating growth, income inequality, and the erosion of the middle class. Drawing from his deep understanding of psychology and social dynamics, he explores how these economic disparities have profound implications for societal well-being and individual flourishing. First of all, I'm aware of the relationship between inequality and social problems. Mm -hmm. There's a very well-developed literature on that, and it, it essentially shows that the more arbitrary, the, the, the broader the reach of inequality in, in a political institution of any given size, the more social unrest. So where, peop where all people are poor, there isn't much social unrest, and where all people are rich, there isn't much social unrest. But when there's a big gap between the two, there's plenty, and that's mostly driven by disaffected young men who aren't very happy that they can't climb the hierarchy, there are barriers in their way. And so there is reason to ameliorate relative poverty. The problem with that to some degree is that most attempts to ameliorate relative poverty tend to increase absolute poverty, and they do it dramatically. And the only solution that we've ever been able to develop to that is something approximating a free market system. I wouldn't call it a capitalist system because I think that's capture of the terminology by the radical leftists. It's a free exchange system. and the price you pay for a free exchange system is you still have inequality, but the advantage you gain is that the absolute levels of privation plummet. And I think the data on that are, I think they're absolutely conclusive, especially, and that's been especially demonstrated in the radical decrease in rates of poverty since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989, because we've lifted more people out of poverty in the last four decades than we had in the entire course of human history up to that date. And that's not least because the statist interventionist types who argued for a radical state-sponsored redistribution lost the Cold War, right? And that freed up Africa to some degree and certainly the Southeast Asian countries to pursue something like a free trade economy. And that instantly even, that instantly made them rich, even China. So, well, so that's an argument, let's say on the side of free exchange, but it's also an argument twofold argument pointing out how we ameliorate absolute poverty, which it should be a concern for leftists, but doesn't seem to be anymore, by the way, and also an argument for the maintenance of a necessary inequality. Like, I'm not sure that inequality can be decreased beyond a certain degree without it, that decrease causing other serious problems. And we can talk about that, but, mm -hmm. but it's a um, complicated problem. Yeah, but for one point of clarification, when you say leftist, what do you mean by that? Well, we, I was going with your definition, like mm -hmm. essentially the, 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 the core idea being something like the, the central problem being one of relative inequality and distribution of resources and mm -hmm. the central solution to that being something like state-sponsored economic intervention. I mean, there's other ways we could define left sure. and right, and we can do be, that, but, yeah, I, I but I'll be, stick with the one that you brought forward to begin with. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. I, I only want to be clear on that because um, because uh, people get mad if I call myself a leftist. Um, uh, oftentimes online or in, especially in Europe or worldwide, leftists will ex uh, refer exclusively to like socialists or communists. And anybody to the right of that would be considered like a liberal. If you No, believe, usually like, a, a fascist. Well, <laughs> depending and on your Very rapidly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to be clear on that. Uh, so I'm absolutely a pro-capitalist, pro-free market guy. Um, I'm not, I'm never gonna. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, that, that's good. It's good to get that clear. Why? Yeah. 
Um, because uh, I would argue that when you look at like the fall of the Soviet Union or you look at the fail failure of like socialist or communist regimes, uh, I don't know if the issue there was so much redistribution. I think the problem- That was one of many issues. I don't think it was an issue at all, actually, I would say. I think the issue was uh, command and Wait a minute, wait, yeah, a, go ahead. Yeah. wait a minute. What, mm -hmm. what do you mean redistribution wasn't an issue? What the hell do you think they did to the kulaks? <clears throat> that was forced redistribution. It resulted in the in the death of six million people. So maybe I'm not understanding what you mean, but that was redistribution at its at its like pinnacle. Sure. And forced redistribution. And when it I, was brutal. When I when I think of the uh, when I think of the strengths of capitalism. Um, the ability for markets to dynamically respond to shifting consumer demand is like the reason why capitalism and free market economies dominate the world. When you've got socialist or communist systems, uh, command economies where a government is trying to say, this is how much this is gonna cost, this yeah. is how much you're gonna produce and make, the, this is a failed way of managing a, a state economy. Even in places where they still do it, there are always shadow economies and stuff. There were in the Soviet Union that prop up where people try to uh, basically ameliorate the conditions that are resulting from said horrible command economy practices. Uh, so I guess in a way you could argue a command economy is kind of like redistribution. It's a form of it, but- No, it's a worse problem. I, if, yeah, you're, yeah. if you're pointing to the fact that that's a worse problem, I'm-, I'm Yeah, I would say that's definitely the reason why these places uh, failed because they just weren't able to respond to changing conditions. Okay.